So Donald Trump spent Christmas and Boxing Day and the days running up to Christmas attacking everyone and blaming everyone else for his problems, and that includes the Supreme Court. This morning, he went on the Twitter, and of course, he attacked Mitch McConnell, but we've already talked about that. But here, he's calling the Supreme Court weak and totally incompetent, and the reason he's doing that is because they wouldn't rule the way he wants to rule, and also, they won't follow him down the garden path with his conspiracy theories and his absolutely undemocratic plots. And this is very, very telling. Because Trump has appointed three Supreme Court judges. Like most presidents get one or two, he got three in four years. He got three Supreme Court justices in four years. He had, relative to the amount of time he was in power, an immense amount of effect on the U.S. judicial system. Part of that was based on luck because sometimes more judges retire or pass away at the Supreme Court and the appeals court level. But a lot of that was based on the fact that Mitch McConnell systematically thwarted every effort for Barack Obama and the Democrats to appoint judges at almost every level for the past couple years or the last couple years of the Barack Obama regime from about 2014 to 2016. And as a result, Trump could fill all these vacancies on the Supreme Court and on many of the feeder courts where you get future Supreme Court judges. And so the result is Donald Trump is the main reason why the Supreme Court would be good and or bad. And so it's very, very rich. It's very, very ironic to see Donald Trump complain about the Supreme Court when he's directly responsible for one third of the judges, three of the nine, on the court. And the other three of the nine are appointed by other Republicans and only three only the last three are quote-unquote liberal judges appointed by Obama and other people. Like, two-thirds of the court is conservative, one-third of the court is Trump in particular, and they're not ruling his way. Now, that doesn't make the court weak necessarily. If anything, you might say that makes the court somewhat strong. That Trump's own appointees, at least on cases that are egregious, refuse to just automatically rule his way. If the court was weak and incompetent, you would have seen Kavanaugh and Gorsuch and Amy Coney Barrett all without question tolerate Trump's attack on democracy because they quote unquote owed him. That was the fear. And look, I had that fear as well. But it was very telling to see that when the chips were down, when that Texas court case backed by a majority of House Republicans and Trump himself went to the Supreme Court, they didn't want to hear it. Seven of the nine judges said it's not even worth hearing. This case is so ridiculous. Texas has no standing. It has no basis to be heard in this chamber. Reject it. Two of the nine said we'll hear it. That was Alito and Thomas. But neither of those were Trump appointees. Trump's own conservative appointees agreed with the three liberals and said, actually, we don't want to hear this case. The Supreme Court that Donald Trump helped formulate, the court that is largely of his construction right now, more than any other individual president, rejected him. And that's why he's freaking out. For Trump, it's never about fairness. It's never about getting a fair deal for himself or his party or the American people. It's all about loyalty. And for Trump, loyalty is a one-way street. He doesn't have to be loyal to anyone. You have to be loyal to him. If you're loyal to him, he'll give you, you know, corrupt pardons. He'll give you cash payouts. He'll give you jobs you don't deserve. But if you betray him even a little bit, you are basically his totalizing enemy. And that's why a Republican Party that did a lot to help Donald Trump is just being torn apart right now because they refuse to back him 100%. Remember this, because this is a man that basically got what he wanted on most key issues for his entire four years as president. And now, because he lost an election clearly, emphatically, and a lot of people in his party are saying, 
you know, maybe it's time to move on, sir. That's that's too far for him. That's why this man was a danger to democracy, and that's why it's good to see him go. And it also needs to be said that at a time when people are supposed to be, you know, coming together, people are supposed to be putting aside differences for a common good, like Christmas has that spirit. Maybe I'm being too emotional here, but you know, Christmas really should be a time to think about the positives, even in really difficult straits. And he's whining and BSing on Twitter like a giant baby. And it also has to be said that at a time when the American people are suffering and he's sort of vaguely tweeting about getting people extra stimulus money, which is good, he's not actually doing the fight for that. He's simply complaining about his own grievances. The American people deserve a president that cares more about them than their golf score or their own ego.